Oh boy, this is messy. There's a rift reportedly brewing between the White House and the Pentagon over ISIS. And here's why ISIS fighters are reportedly fleeing their de facto capital of Raqqa due to extensive U.S. bombings. According to the Washington Post, the White House uh, wants to place military outposts in the Syrian desert in an effort to isolate them, as well as to ensure that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad doesn't try to expand his power hold from Damascus. The Pentagon, however, feels that this will just escalate our involvement in the Syrian civil war and potentially put U.S. troops in a very dangerous position. And by the way, we haven't even mentioned that Russian warplanes are buzzing overhead. So, which plan makes the most sense, given this nightmare scenario? Joining me now is former U.N. Ambassador John Bolton. He's also a Fox News contributor. Welcome back, Ambassador Bolton. Glad to be with you. So, is this the first time the White House and Pentagon have had this kind of a fundamental difference? Well, I think this is a, more of a tactical difference than anything else. I think what uh, both sides are missing at this point is, at least it, I understand it from the public reporting, uh, is what their strategy is after ISIS itself is defeated. Uh, and it ties into some of the problems that we're having with the Syrians and the Russians now because, frankly, the strategy that Obama followed for uh, during his last years in office and the strategy we are still fi following today yeah. will advantage Iran after ISIS is defeated, and that is contrary to our interest. All right, so what do we do? So let's say that we are successful and we defeat ISIS. Uh, this outpost seems like a temporary solution because uh, once the U.S. pulls out, because it is temporary, I mean, they've, they've said that you can't keep uh, U.S. troops there forever, then the, the same problems will materialize. It's an avenue for ISIS to move and also a place where Assad can gain more traction and land. So which, well, is, the, which is the worst of those two scenarios? Well, I wouldn't put U.S. outposts out there if we were going to so use you, anybody. So you agree with the Pentagon here? Well, I, I would find uh, Arab troops who could fulfill that role. Look, ISIS is going to be defeated. There's no doubt about it. The problem is, because of the slow roll strategy we followed the past several years, much of ISIS's top leadership is already gone, and more will leave. Those who want martyrdom will stay behind, but ISIS will simply shift to another geographic location. That's why the real issue is, once ISIS uh, loses control over the territory, what replaces it? Yeah. Do we really want the government of Baghdad which is a subsidiary now of the Ayatollahs in Tehran to take back that territory? Do we want to give Assad full control over what used to be Syria and, and allow Iran now to have an arc of control? Iran, Iraq, Assad, Syria, and Hezbollah and Lebanon. I think that's very detrimental to our interest and the interest of Israel and our Arab friends in the region. And yeah. yet at this point, we have no strategy uh, to deal with the vacuum we're going to create when we destroy ISIS. Well, we also have allies that don't really have a relationship. The only binding force uh, seems to be the relationship with the U.S., and I'm talking about Saudi Arabia and Israel, and the fact that they both despise Iran. Is, is that enough to hold a coalition together, or does this go to the ultimate point that it's so messy over there, there are so many civil wars, our involvement just seems to exacerbate everything, so why are we there in the first place? Well, our involvement doesn't exacerbate anything. These are conflicts that have been brewing uh, nascent for a long time. Now they're coming to the surface. And it's not just a disdain for Iran. It's the fear of an Iranian nuclear weapons capability and the fact that for over 35 years, Iran has been the world's central banker of terrorism, Shia and Sunni alike. So I think we need to, th to think about what we would put in place in those parts of Iraq and Syria yeah. that reject Iran, that reject Assad. My but, idea but why do is to we create... have to do that? I mean, you talk about Arab troops there. Why do, I mean, when you, when you talk about we doing that, that's the U.S., and, and that starts to sound like nation building. When you, no, have, no, when no. you have nations that are carved up Just let and, me finish. and we are coming up with the alternative, why are we doing that? Just, just the, the idea here is not we're going to build the nation, but, but my thought would be we create a new Sunni state because otherwise you're just going to have this revolt reemerge and the problem not be solved. I think the Saudis and others can pay for it. I think troops to guard it can come from places like Egypt. But if you don't fill this vacuum, somebody else will. And I fear it will be Iran laying the basis for the next conflict, which could affect Israel and our Arab friends in the Gulf. Yeah, I understand that. I mean, I guess the fear is that we just keep creating more vacuums. And we're not creating the vacuums. The I mean, vacuums are Libya, there. The we, issue we've is, created that vacuum. 
No, well, unless you want to allow ISIS to continue its caliphate. The, the fact is, this is a zone of instability. It's grown worse over the past eight years. And if we leave it unattended un, uh, to, we'll, we'll feel the instability in the streets of America by terrorist attacks. I think they're already here. Well, it's going to get worse. That's the problem. I don't know, man. It seems like a really expensive solution. Uh, there's obviously no easy way to, to slice up this pie. And uh, it, it seems like our interests there shrink by the day. But uh, I, I, I don't or know. Or you could allow the Russians to dominate the region.